Hi. This next talk can be really powerful because it can help release patterns of pain in our lives where we've had an unconscious spiritual root that we don't even realize is the reason. It was given by my friend Jim Banks of the House of Healing Ministries. So, enjoy. I want to bring you a little bit different perspective today on a couple of things. Part of that is found in this book. They make great Christmas presents. Uh, so sure be stock up. But I want to play with your theology a little bit here for a few minutes before we dive into trauma. I have a, a different understanding about why we're in the kind of shape that we're in. Genesis chapter 1 says that we are made in his image. John chapter 3 says God is a spirit. Logically, we can presume that we are spirit beings. 1 Thessalonians 5.23, Paul says, I would that you were sanctified wholly, altogether, spirit, soul, and body. And he put that order in place specifically because he wanted to tell you what was most important about how we were constructed. We are spirit beings, and that's incredibly important for us to understand. There are a couple of other verses that we need also to understand. The word says that there were good works established for you to perform before the foundation of the world. So we all have a purpose. We all have a reason for being here. We all have something to contribute, something to do. And it has a great deal to do not only with our skill set, but it has a great deal to do with our personality, our giftings, our calling, our intelligence, our spiritual gifts, all that make us up. Now, it's my contention, according to Jeremiah chapter 1, that there's a story going on here that we're generally not aware of. Jeremiah chapter 1, I think it's verse 4 or 5, Jeremiah is told by the Lord, he said, while you were still in your mother's womb, I knew you. That word knew is the Hebrew word yada, which is the same word that is used when Abraham knew Sarah and she conceived a son, when Adam knew Eve and she became pregnant. So what Jeremiah was talking about was there is something significant in a connection with God before we here appeared on planet Earth. There was a connection that we had with him pre Earth. People are going, holy cow, where in the world are we headed? <laughs> we see your God is really somebody special. Before there is a need, there is always provision. Because he said, the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. Yeah. So everything that you needed has been provided in advance yeah. of the recognition of your personal need. It is my presumption that according to Jeremiah chapter 1, this is probably what happened. God created all of us as spirit beings. We communed with him. We saw him. We engaged with him. We experienced his love, his magnificence, and who he was. Our lives as spirit beings are eternal. And God said one day, I think it would be a good thing if you had a tour of duty on planet Earth. I got some stuff I want you to do. And what I'm going to do in order for you to do what I've planned for you to do, because he said, <laughs> He said, you know, I know the plans for you, and they are really good. They're going to give you a future and a hope. This is exciting. I hope you're excited, too, he said to us. He said, in order for you to fulfill what I want you to do, I need to install some things in you. And I believe one of those things he installed in us comes from the verse that says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. I think those desires of our heart were installed long, long, long ago. 
And he began to put other things in us that would allow us to do everything that we're here to do. But there was another party standing by, taking notice of all that was installed. He didn't necessarily know the plan exactly, because that was still in the mind of God. But because he saw what he was putting in us, he could probably deduce what was coming. And for him, that was not good news. There was a war in heaven. He got booted out, wound up here on planet Earth. And God said, I'm going to send you. And because of the things that I put in you, because of all of those skills, those desires, the passion of your heart, you're going to display me before him. And that is going to seriously kick him off. So Satan kind of had a clue of what was coming. He had to find and figure out a way to keep that from happening. So you and I have been intentionally and yet unintentionally involved in the context of a greater cosmic battle than you and I know or are conscious of on a daily basis. But we've been victims of it nonetheless. And so he can see, well, you know, if I mess with your great granddaddy, because he knows the word, he can take advantage of Exodus 20, verse 6. The iniquities of the father are visited upon the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. Because he's really after you. But he's very conniving and sets up a plan that introduces all manner of curses in your family line that our great, 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 great grandparents have no idea about. And yet we wake up here on planet Earth one day and all this stuff is hung around our neck. And it's a war. We find that we're not able to fulfill the desires of our heart. In fact, we've been wounded so badly it seems like none of that will ever come to pass. Um, today is my birthday. Thank you. And I'm a testimony to all late bloomers. Put this book out. Because this is one of the answers that counteracts the work of the enemy in our lives that has kept us from fulfilling our destiny, the reason that we were here on planet Earth. Now, I didn't approach this subject in the usual manner. This is basically how do you deal with the spiritual consequences of trauma in your life? Now, I'm gonna give you the 25 cent version orally today. And then I'm going to pray this process over you. I'll guarantee you, you'll never be the same. In the 25 years or so that Pat and I have been praying for people and ministering to people, I've prayed lots of prayers that I wondered if they ever got higher than the ceiling. And when God gave me this about two years ago, um, it's been nothing short of phenomenal. Um, something significant has happened in the lives of individuals every time I have prayed it. It's been nothing short of miraculous. It's not the end all be all for trauma sufferers. I'm not advertising it that, but it's a very significant element in it. Because what it reveals is this. Trauma is actually an intentional scheme of the enemy to get hold of you for future torment. He's just out to make you miserable because he hates you and he hates your God. And there really isn't much he can do about it. So he's wanting to take his vengeance against God out on you, his prized creation. For most of us who have suffered some kind of trauma, we're well acquainted with its effects on us. But I want to introduce you to a couple more that may be for you the reason 
why you feel stuck. You feel like you don't fit. You feel like there's something missing. You feel like if I just had that inexplicable whatever it is, I could do what I'm supposed to do. The last little hole in the wall could be punched and I could carry myself to the place I know I'm supposed to be, but I know this just isn't it. One of the interesting things about trauma is this. A portion of us in the context of trauma is stolen from us. And it is held captive or imprisoned or stuck in another time, space, dimension, or place. Have you ever been in a restaurant and a 30-something waitress comes up to you and asks what you'd like to drink in the voice of an eight-year-old? where there is not an age-appropriate voice that goes with this individual. Have you ever been in a situation where you've known someone who you've ministered to, prayed for, encouraged, been around a lot, and they seem to be making progress, and you go on vacation and you come back, and they're worse off than when you left? Have you ever been in a situation where you've seen someone who developmentally in one area never seemed to be able to advance. It seemed like emotionally they got stuck someplace. The reality of those things point to one source, the trauma that happened in the life of that individual at that particular age. We have a barbecue restaurant in this area. You walk into that place, and this girl has the voice of about a seven-year-old. Something happened to her at seven years old, and that portion of her got stuck and could never mature beyond it. This is part of the answer. <laughs> that may be the other part. <laughs> Take a message, we need to know what it says. Now, one of the other things that impacts us very significantly is this. According to that verse in uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.23 that says, I would that you were sanctified wholly or altogether, spirit, soul, and body. There's a couple of things that you need to note about that specific verse. Number one is the order in which those elements of us is mentioned. Okay. And so what Paul was doing was he was telling us the order in which we need to begin to live our lives. Through the recognition that number one, we are spirit beings. Our spirit, our human spirit submitted to the Holy Spirit is supposed to rule over our soul, our mind, our will, and our emotions. And it in turn is supposed to rule over our body, our flesh. As you can see by my physique, Something is slightly out of order. We're not going to discuss that. Just make a note. A tiny note since this is my birthday. So the reality of that is this. Most of the things that people suffer with physically have their root in either an emotional or a spiritual issue. You with me? Okay. You know on a Friday night, after it's been a long, tough week, how you feel. A stiff neck, shoulders are a little tense, back may be stiff. It is another sign that I am an integrated human being, that my spirit, my soul, and my body are one thing, okay? I can separate them for purposes of discussion but if I come up and kick your shins as hard as I can, your spirit's going to be really ticked at me, okay? The reality of this is this. When you and I experience pain, we carry it in our bodies. Some of you know where you carry your pain. It is a good idea for the rest of you who do not to pay attention to your body and find out where, where you carry it, okay? For many, it's in your shoulders or your back, or a number of us carry it in your abdomen, 
your God created a method for you to dump that, okay? Jesus said, cast all your cares on me because I care for you. So he's created a method to be able to deep six the pain. Now, everybody experiences it. Jesus said, in this world, crap is going to hit the fan. <laughs> Uniformly. Everybody gets it, whether you like it or not. Okay? So we've all felt pain. We've all felt embarrassment. We've all felt rejection. We've all felt abandonment in some way, shape, form, or fashion. And it produces pain and anxiety within us that we carry in our bodies. If I ignore one or all three, I'm going to get sick. And the Lord says, no, 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 no. That doesn't have to happen. Trauma introduces to us some of the greatest sources of pain. Many of us are aware of the pain of physical abuse, emotional abuse, sexual abuse, and what it does to us. But also consider some of the trauma that you've experienced as an individual from raising a rebellious teenager. Now, the word says that women experience pain in childbirth. The pain of raising a child does not stop after the child is delivered. We have a 24-year-old, and I can tell you, he gives us a serious pain. <laughs> I love you, Jeff. I love you, Jeff. <laughs> but you're giving your mom pain. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> um... Many of you have, uh, have experienced surgery in a hospital. Um, they're not even a very safe place. And many of you have heard the horror stories of individuals who have gone in for surgery and had something extracted or cut off or whatever that wasn't even supposed to be extracted or cut off. Many of you have also know of individuals who've gone into the hospital and wound up with staph infection that was worse than what they had when they went in. On and on and on and on. In many cases, the rehabilitation process is more difficult and more painful than perhaps the original injury itself. But if you do not have a method to deal with those kinds of things, you're stuck. You're stuck. The Lord does not want us to be stuck. The coolest thing about what I'm going to pray over you is that you can do it yourself. We were headed to Abilene um, and... Um, had a gal um, said, I went to your website, I got the prayer process, and I prayed it over myself. And for the last six nights, I have been able to sleep through the night for the first time in 14 years. See, that's one of the things that trauma does to us. It interrupts our sleep. You may have repeated interruptions with dreams, thoughts, what have you. Do you know how armies get information from a captured prisoner? Sleep deprivation. Because you cannot reason any longer. You can't make appropriate decisions. Confusion rules everything. That's the place the enemy wants you to be. Isolated, confused, unable to make a choice. You're stuck in a place you can't get out of. How many people do you know who fear going to sleep at night? Because they know the dreams they're going to have. They know the demonic entities that they're going to face during the night. The fear is so great, they don't want to go to sleep. The enemy is really tricky. And he will take advantage of everything he can to cripple you. I know what I'm like when I get sick. I am a spiritual nincompoop. I have no desire to pray, read my Bible, do anything spiritual. I just want to get well. And the faster it happens, the better. Imagine living your life like that 24-7, year after year after year after year. That's what it's like for many, many people. Now, the interesting thing about trauma is this. Trauma is like beauty. It's in the eye of the beholder. In other words, 
You could have a family of four or five kids, all of them experiencing the same thing. One of them is totally debilitated by it. Three of them may or may not recover. And one of them didn't even know anything happened. That's the way it is with us. So even a traumatic situation that occurs that's very, very difficult has varying effects on individuals. Oftentimes what we as human beings do is we try to slough it off. I can't do anything about it. I don't understand it. Maybe this is normal and this is the way I get to live the rest of my life. So I just put up with it. And that's the place that most believers find themselves. I think it's one of the reasons why so many people have a very, very difficult time making choices they need to make. They know they need to make a choice. This is what I want to do. But there seems to be an inability to engage the will in a fashion that produces positive results. We have seen enormous results with this. Because what this does is it will disconnect these individuals from the second heaven entity that grabbed hold of them in the context and in the midst of trauma. Psalms 115 verse 16 says this, the heavens are the Lord's heavens and the earth he has given into the hands of men. For those demonic entities that touch earth have significant influence here. You have been given authority over them in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. They're yours to deal with. I don't know where the line is, but I'm going to call these things second heaven, the nasty boogers up there that are the powers and principalities, rulers and heavenly places, so forth and so on. Those are slightly above my pay grade to deal with, but I have an ally who is above them. And so what I wind up doing is asking the Lord to disconnect the individual from those things. The cool thing about it is this, and I have seen this just by experience. The Lord disconnects people from those things, whether they're demonic, whether they're powers, principalities, rulers, you name it. I like that. Anybody who's ever wrestled with a demon for any length of time, you'll love it. Makes it really simple. Does that mean that I can deliver somebody in that fashion? Not necessarily. Some people have agreements with them. Some people have opened the door, are involved in some kind of sinful activity that even if it does get booted out, he'll be back in 24 hours and drag a bunch of folks along with it. Okay. So this is not, again, this is not the end all be all of tools. It is one element of the tools, but it is a really significant element. Okay. Because so many people have been impacted by these entities they have dealt with as much as they know how to dealt with and still can't get free and this thing has been given to us as a strategy to deal with those things we don't necessarily understand but i can tell you this it has been enormously significant for a number of people one of the things that i originally thought was that this was something that you really couldn't pray over somebody who had significant dissociative issues or had been ritually abused. That's Bologna. It works. And so far it has worked over a number of ritually abused individuals. They did not get unnecessarily triggered by it. Part of that was because they were in the company of someone they trusted. If you do not have a significant relationship built up with somebody who is significantly dissociated, uh, or has been ritually abused, then there's probably a risk of unnecessarily triggering them. Um, since there is no distance in the spirit, you can pray it over them from the next room. Okay? One of the things that it has done for significantly dissociated people who have no access to memories of trauma is that the Holy Spirit is able to pull a string and pull up the memory he wants to start with. The scripture talks about a promise 
to the Jews who said, I am not going to drive out all of the beasts of the land in one day, lest everything else stand in your way. The Holy Spirit does not want to do everything in a day. He knows the precise order that the structures in our mind, their belief systems and everything happened, that if he can pull on it, it'll start the process. For most of us, if we had all of our ungodly beliefs jerked out all at one time, all of our dissociate issues solved in one moment, we'd lose our minds because we would have no foundation for who we were. Most of our identity right now is based in a bunch of our wounding. And the Lord does not want that to be the case. But he doesn't want you to be put in the loony bin in the midst of the process. He loves us, okay? So he's very gentle and easy in this process. So this thing has had numerous ramifications for creating things, openings, abilities to touch some things that haven't been able to be touched before for some people. Um, I'm going to pray this over each of you. For those of you who are habitual note takers, uh, you need to put your stuff down. One of the interesting ramifications of this prayer process over you is you're going to be relaxed for the first time in a long time because you do not understand how much of the stuff of the world, the anxieties, the tensions, and everything else that you carry is a normal course of activity and don't even, you're not even aware of it. Now, I want to, before I pray it, I want to point out two things. Each of us lives in a very stressful environment. The world is pressing in from all sides, telling you, you have to be busy, 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 busy. You have to do, 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 do. And so we live with the stress of time, of function, of productivity, of trying to be perfect, all of these kinds of things that we're not really aware of, but they wear on you. And each of us at the end of the week, we have some evidence of that because I'm tired. I'm worn out. Pat and I went to Jackson, Mississippi, and we talked Sozo and a couple of other things and got a call from some folks in Amarillo. And so we flew up to Amarillo to spend a couple of days with them. And at the conclusion of that, they dropped us off at the airport at about 6.15 in the morning. Well, that plane was dead. The one that came in dropped some people off. It had mechanical issues. It was dead, too. They moved us to another airline. Everything just kept getting... We finally got back to Jackson, Mississippi to pick up our car to drive home 9 o'clock that night. Now, we were worn out. Absolutely worn out. But the reality of it was we had done nothing but sit around in an airport. No heavy lifting. All our bags have wheels on them. I did have to go through two TSA pat-downs, and that was traumatic enough. <laughs> but it was like, this was a stressful kind of thing. And so we had to pray this thing over us just to cut off the normal junk that happens to us. Okay? One of the other things that happens to those who minister a lot to people is there is such a thing as secondary trauma that you can take on as a result of listening to the stories, the horrific things that other people have been through. If you don't do something about it, you're going to carry the results of it with you. Okay? My grandmama used to say, if you walk through the cow pasture, you're bound to get a little on you. Okay? That's the way it is walking through this defiled world, bumping up against defiled people who are into all sorts of stuff, walking on defiled ground, and that's going to be in another book, but you can do something about it, okay? You don't have to live like that. 
See, that's why Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and life abundant. Walking around half dead, feeling tired after you've had a night's sleep is not abundant living. You have a choice. Exercise your choice. Now, what's described in this book, and I've called it a, a prayer process for a good reason. I didn't want to create a crafted prayer that you could read like your laundry list over you. Although it has a couple of those in it to give you some suggestions of how to do it for kids, how to do it for those who have been sexually abused and sex traffic victims, homeless, uh, even returning veterans from Afghanistan and Iraq. The key is listening to the Holy Spirit. I've given you some principles. And if you will listen to the Holy Spirit, he will tell you precisely what he wants you to pray, what he wants you to address, and how he wants you to deal with it. You don't have to go through every point, and there are 14 of them in this book. I've only covered a couple of them in the last few minutes. There's more to this, but it is a process. It's not a checklist, all right? So get comfortable. If you have to move to get more comfortable, please do. We're going to have some folks who come around and lay hands on you. One of the cool things that I have found out about this prayer process is it's most effective if it's prayed over you about three times. Things tend to come off in layers, okay? So buy every book I have left so I don't have to take them home. You ready? Well, Father, we just take authority over everything that will not bow its knee to the name of Jesus Christ from participating, influencing, or in any way, shape, form, or fashion entering into this process. We kick you to the curb. You don't belong here. We give you no place or space. You have none. And Holy Spirit, we invite you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, I bring these, your choice children, your choice servants, your, the love of your life before you today. And I ask you to disconnect them from every second heaven entity that's gained access to them through the trials and tribulations and traumatic events that they have suffered in life. I ask you specifically to disconnect them from chaos, destruction, distortion and confusion. from every defiling spirit that's gained access to them. From disappointment, disillusionment, rejection and abandonment. How to cut them free. And I command out of their bodies any thing of a residual nature of trauma, tension, fear, anxiety, worry, stress, terror, I command out of their ears and their eyes and their nostrils and their mouths every memory of traumatic abuse, accidents, injuries, surgeries as commanded out. Be released right now in Jesus' name. Be released, be released, be released. 
all of the effects of anesthesia, antiseptics, invasive medical procedures, broken bones, I command it out of your bodies in Jesus' name, and you will come out without harm or injury. I speak life to their lymphatic systems to carry all of the wastes and the toxins and everything out in a natural manner. I command out of their bodies anything of a residual nature of trauma that's bonded with any other chemical any drug, anything that was ingested, injected, inhaled, or came through the skin. That's commanded to be released right now in Jesus' name. You can't hang on to any of it. Just let it go. Let it go. Let it go. I command out of your bodies all of the, the pent-up stress, tension, connected with anger, resentment, bitterness, unforgiveness. Just let it go. Let it be released from every muscle, every cell in your body, every bone, every piece of connective tissue, every muscle and every organ. Release, release, release. Release. Don't hang on to any of it. I command out of your memory the sense of every defiling touch, smell, taste, vibration, pressure. Release, release, release. Release, release, release. I command out of your ears every time someone said, you're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not fast enough. You're not quick enough. You're not lovable. Every time you were pushed, shoved, taken advantage of, left behind. Rejected or abandoned. Just release, 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 release. Release, release, release. I command out of your bodies any tension that came from having to walk on eggshells as a child. For the fear that came waiting for the other shoe to drop waiting for the explosive anger. Be released. Release, 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 release. Don't hang on to it anymore. Release, just let it go. Release it. I speak this to your spirits and to your soul. It's time to rest. You do not have to be continually on guard. Those days are over. You are safe now. You're safe. You are safe. It's time to enter into the rest that the Lord promised you. Father, 
I ask you in Jesus' name that you would cause to be released any portion of them that has been imprisoned, trapped, stuck, or held captive in another time, space, place, or dimension. Father, I ask you not only to cause it to be released, but I ask you to cause it to be restored to them. And I ask you to cleanse it of any defilement of any place that it has been. And I ask you to cancel the assignment of any familiar spirit that's been connected to it or assigned to it as a result of the place that it has been. Father, I ask you to break off every curse established against them because of generational trauma. Father, I ask you in Jesus' name to draw a line in the sand in each life and say, thus far and no more. This shall not be visited upon my children or my children's children to a hundred generations. Father, as you are restoring these pieces, I ask you in Jesus' name that you, I I even just pronounce forgiveness over all of you for those who have banished some portion of you because you thought it was unsafe. You thought it was unhealthy. It didn't fit in. It wasn't acceptable. It wasn't good enough. And Father, I ask you to cause all of those portions of them that they sent away themselves. I ask you to cause them to be collected and restored to them. And I ask you, Father, to restore them to this current time, this space, this place, this dimension, and this maturity level. That it be virtually a seamless reconnection that all of those pieces that they have needed to express who they are, their creativity, their place, would be theirs. Father, that the fullness of everything that you created them to be would no longer be frustrated. Father, I ask in Jesus' name that you would restore any connections between hemispheres of their brain, areas of their brain, or glands of their brain that have been damaged by the traumatic events, that have not been brought to full maturity because of the things that they have suffered. And I ask you to reestablish every connection that needs to be made rebalance the connections reestablish for them clarity and ability to process with both hemispheres of the brain fully operable father i ask you to restore appropriate sleep patterns for each one of them Father, for those who have been interrupted sleep by tormenting dreams, Father, we just shut down, cut off, render ineffective every pathway, every portal, every means of communication of the enemy. We remove from them even the devices that the enemy put on them as a means of influencing them or screaming in their ear. Lord, we just shut that down in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Father, to restore to them the appropriate sleep patterns that you designed for them. That when they rest their heads on their pillow at night, they will have full confidence that when they arise in the morning, their bodies will be rejuvenated, restored able to do everything they need to do for the coming day. 
And Father, while that is happening, I ask you in Jesus' name to download to their spirits everything that they need. You know the events that are going to happen. You know the people that they're going to run into, the situations. And Father, I just ask you to download it where it's accessible by the Holy Spirit. It can be drawn out at a moment's notice. That when they get up in the morning, they will feel fully prepared for the day that is coming because they know their Lord and King has got it all in order. Father, for those who have suffered years and years, I ask you in Jesus' name to put their bodies back in order. Every system in their body functioning in unity and harmony with every other system. Father, I speak life to every immune system circulatory system. Life, 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 life. Lord, reestablish perfect order in the house. And Father, I ask you in Jesus' name that you would fill up by your spirit every place that has been vacated by toxins, heavy metals, whatever else has been left, you know, all the poisons and things that they've hung on to. Even just all the daily stress and tension and anxiety of living in this world of unresolved relationships, of problems at work and in the family. Lord, I ask you, fill them up, head to toe. And while you're at it, Father, I just ask you to begin to remove all of the splinters of all of these traumatic events that are still resident in their hearts. And while you're at it, Father, I ask you in Jesus' name to re reorganize the file cabinet of their memories. And I ask you to move to the front, every one of those memories that declares to them that they are loved, they're appreciated, they're connected, they're part of. That they are somebody that you love and care about to the point that you gave your life them. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless them. I bless them spiritually. I bless them emotionally. I bless them physically. I bless their relationships. I bless their pursuit of you. I bless them with joy and peace in the Holy Spirit. I bless their finances. But Father, most of all, I bless them with your favor. That those who love them will speak their love to them. That where they need a door opened, someone will open it. Where they need an encouraging word, it will be theirs. Where they need a phone call, it will come. Where they need an introduction, where they need to see themselves as you see them. Father, I bless them with that. In Jesus' name.